Okay, thanks, Taral. Uh, so, um, starting off with this, uh, lateral condyle fractures actually are the second most common fractures around the elbow in children. We've heard so much about the supracondylars, and they peak around six years of age. Um, but the first thing that we need to know is that we shouldn't miss the injury. So these are difficult to pick up sometimes on the standard conventional AP and lateral radiographs and you need an internal rotation uh, AP view to really uh, show the fracture in profile. And so it's important to remember to get this view in all your fractures. So uh, Milch really gave this first classification and this is a mechanistic kind of a fra uh, classification which divides them into pull off and push off kind of fractures. Doesn't give much uh, idea about how to treat these fractures. And Mursky later uh, subclassified this into another variant in which the uh, line traverse, fracture line traverses through the physis and comes out medially. Well, uh, Jacob really came out with the first uh, useful classification in which he described these minimally displaced fractures less than two millimeters and the fractures which were more than two millimeters and then the ones which were displaced as well as rotated. And this gave us some um, uh, insight into how to treat and the less displaced ones could be treated conservatively and the more displaced ones needed operative intervention. And uh, the minimally displaced fractures, if we look, the, look at them more closely, uh, we need to really check whether the fracture line reaches the articular cartilage, uh, articular surface, or is it an incomplete fracture? And these are the stable ones, and the unstable ones actually reach the articular surface. And uh, you can uh, further check on this by doing an arthrogram or uh, going for an MRI. Uh, well, Finn, Finn Bogosin re really dived deeper into this uh, subvariant and showed that there were three types of uh, fracture patterns in which one which there was a incomplete fracture and then the complete fractures, whether the fracture line was open more laterally or whether the fracture lines uh, were parallel between the proximal and the distal fragments. And he found that the ones in which the fracture line was open more laterally had less chance of displacement and in, in their cases only 17% displaced, while the one in which the fracture line was uh, parallel had about a 42% displacement. And most of the displacements occurred actually in the first week of, um, of uh, one week from the injury. Uh, well, Song came up with this classification in which he combined the Finbogosin and the uh, Jacobs classification and gave five subtypes. So the one, two, and three are really the Jacobs one, and the type two, uh, and Jacobs two, uh, matches the Song four, and the Jacobs three matches the Song five. And he also gave a, a kind of a, um, idea as to how to go about treating these fractures. So the less displaced can be treated by observation or inside of fixation, and the more displaced uh, need a reduction and pinning, and the uh, rotated fractures uh, sometimes can be treated by closed reduction, but mostly need a open reduction. So let's look at some cases. This is a um, minimally displaced fracture, and this is uh, on the day of injury, and was treated in a cast. About a week out from the cast, uh, the fracture line uh, looks a little displaced, but it's more open laterally as compared to the articular surface, and this was observed and went on to healing without displacement. Another uh, fracture looks pretty minimally displaced on the AP projection, but on the internal oblique there is a displacement, and this uh, was closed, reduced, and pinned, and went on to healing. And uh, that's the follow-up picture. There's a big spike uh, laterally, but this will hopefully remodel over time. Well, uh, Sabarwal and his uh, group uh, analyzed what's the best uh, way to pin these fractures. And uh, they found that uh, two divergent pins with maximum divergence about 60 degrees or three pins were really the most stable construct. Uh, and this is what we should aim for. The other question which comes to mind is, should we bury the pins or leave them out? And there's a study which looked at, at this, and they found that the unburied pins really did not have much of an impact on infection or reoperation rate or any complications, and so that's the preferred method at the present time. Uh, the other third question which comes to mind is, when should we remove the wires? And this is another case at two weeks and at four weeks, and, at, and, and you find that uh, these, these fractures uh, the wire should actually be removed only at time of fracture healing. So this is a study which looked at it and they found that in most cases the wire should uh, be kept for about a six weeks duration. Another case, uh, whether you should use K-wires or screws, and uh, there's a study which looked at this and they found that 
the screw was biomechanically more superior as compared to K-wires. And the screws, uh, just uh, some points, it should be a metaphysical entry, partially threaded screws are better, position just above the olecranon fossa, and try and get a bicortical purchase and use a washer. It's not been used here, but that's better. For the more displaced ones, which are uh, rotated, these are straightforward open reduction cases. You want a lateral approach. You want to, um, once you put your finger in, the hematoma drains out and you can see the fracture. You want to see the articular cartilage and it should be reduced perfectly and fixed with wires just as you do for the closed fractures. Well, another uh, uh, approach is the posterolateral lateral approach. It was described by Mohan. And uh, here the advantage is that you can put a towel clip between the olecranon fossa and the fracture and it helps in reduction. You get a good visualization without much struggle. And though the blood supply comes posteriorly, but if you preserve the extensor attachment, then you don't get into much trouble. So to summarize, uh, we need to get internal rotation oblique views, uh, follow the minimally displaced fractures closely, uh, and check for secondary displacement, close reduction for the less displaced fractures, and open reduction for the more displaced and rotated fractures. Thank you. Thank you.